These guys are called green and golden bell frogs. They're a very well known species of Australian frog. They are a cousin of the growling grass frogs that we get here in Melbourne and the green tree frog. They're all quite closely related. Now for the most part, these guys aren't supposed to be very good climbers. If you have a look at this dude back here, no one's told him. If you have a look, they've still got those suckers on their toes, but they're a lot smaller than the suction pads that we get on things like our green tree frogs that are much more arboreal. They spend more time in the trees. That's why it's kind of chosen to stick in the corner here. Because when they get to full size like this, out on the flat surfaces, they're going to start slipping. The suckers aren't strong enough. But in the corner, he can kind of put some pressure and get a bit further up. Now, just like their cousins, the growling grass frogs, these guys have got some very weird ways of going about their business. First of all, they don't mind coming out during the day. That's really, really strange because most of our frogs here in Australia come out at night. What they'll do is they'll come out and through the reeds and aquatic vegetation, they'll bask in the sun, just like a blue tongue and get nice and warm in the sun like get all that good UV radiation. They look very similar to our growling grass frogs as well, but there's one very big difference. Well, there's two. First of all, where they're found, we'll talk about that in a minute, but also their back. You can kind of see, he's kind of looking right at the camera now. On his back, it's very, very smooth. They've got very smooth skin on their back. Our growling grass frogs, their backs are very, very bumpy, which gives them another name, the warty swamp frog, which I think is a little bit of a mean name. It kind of sounds, makes them sound a bit gross, doesn't it? But they're not. There's nothing wrong with a swamp. Swamps are very important, but that's a great way that you can tell the difference between the two of them. And in some parts of their range, especially right out in eastern Victoria, you can find both species. So it's a really cool way to be able to tell them apart. Now, for the most part, these guys are found further north, whereas the growling grass frogs go from kind of over the border into South Australia, right across Victoria and up towards the border of New South Wales in the east. These guys are found from Far East Gippsland right up through Sydney and further north in New South Wales along the coast. They used to be found in a lot more places. Just like our growling grass frogs, they have suffered a lot of habitat loss and now in parts of the Sydney Basin and further south where a lot of the land that they used to live on has been cleared and changed, these guys aren't really found there anymore. That said, they are found in some quite interesting places. One of the best places you can see some of these guys is in Homebush, which is the part of Sydney where all the Olympians stayed back in the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. The water there isn't the cleanest, and a lot of those creeks and things are all kind of half concrete now. It's not fantastic habitat, but these guys still persist. They are tough when they need to be tough. Now, these guys hunt mostly for invertebrates. They eat a lot of insects and spiders and things. When they're small, when they've just come out of the water, they also hunt along the water's edge. And they'll eat the little mosquito wrigglers, the little baby mosquitoes when they're still in the water wriggling around like this. The baby frogs absolutely love them. As they get bigger, they take on bigger prey. And one of their favorite foods, just like our growlers, is other species of frog. In fact, they'll even eat smaller members of their own species. They'll be cannibals, which is a little bit strange but there should be plenty of them to go around. Unfortunately, it's not the case anymore. They've lost a lot of their habitat. Pollution really impacts on these guys. And of course, they've been suffering from that horrible chytrid fungus. Their own pandemic that amphibians have been dealing with since the 1980s. It's really, really not good. It's actually quite terrifying. It's impacted on frogs and other amphibians all over the world. We've seen huge declines in amphibians in some areas. And in Australia, we've already had Four species of frog go extinct because of chytrid, partly or completely. And another 10 are very, very close. And these guys are next in line with their growlers as well. Luckily, they're a fairly well-known species and you can buy, at different times of year, chocolate green and golden bell frogs and help raise a little bit of money to help save these very, very beautiful frogs. Now, these guys are important and all frogs are important because they can be fantastic environmental indicators. What that means is if we go out to, let's say, a pond out in the bush and we see lots of different species of frogs and we see tadpoles and baby frogs and adult frogs of lots of different species, we know, okay, conditions here must be pretty good because when something goes wrong, frogs tend to be more sensitive to it than a lot of our other species. And they are indicators because they can show us very early on if something's gone wrong. If there are no frogs at all, if there's only one or two species of frog, if the frogs are all adults and the other stages of their life aren't there, we can go, hmm, okay, something's going on here. 
Some species, like our common froglets and our spotted marsh frogs, they're pretty tough. And even if the water's a little bit rank or a little bit polluted, they'll still live there. But some of our more sensitive species, they'll start disappearing. And even though everything can look nice and green and clean and lush, there might be something going on. And so our indicator species can help us to figure it out before it starts affecting other species in the environment. And we can help to restore the balance if there's been some pollution or a chemical leak or just something's gone wrong. These guys can help us as an early alarm and give us the opportunity to do something nice and quick before everything else goes downhill. Because that's not what we want to happen. And then the frogs can slowly start to recover. Let's move on to another freshwater species. This is one you guys have met. I know you've met him before. He's one of my favorites. Let's get out Rex. 